In this video, I'm going to show you how to manage or to get more out of super useful Salesforce payments reports using Chargent. And we'll answer your questions in the comments and check the description for the steps. My name is Stacy from Chargent. And if you're a Salesforce admin or consultant who wants to learn about payments and be a superstar for your organization, click subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. So why should you master these Salesforce payments reports? If you're a Salesforce admin or consultant, it can be hard to know everything about payments, but it's okay because at Chargent, we're hard at work to help you solve these problems. And by the way, we've made a special checklist for you on 10 ways to make Salesforce payments safe, easy, and profitable. So check that link in the components below. Before you begin, you should know that Chargent includes a number of Salesforce payments reports out of the box, so you can easily track your transactions and reconcile your daily batches. You can also customize these reports to find out how much your customers have paid you, which payments are overdue, and more. And the Salesforce Help and Trailhead are also good resources for this. If you're still using Salesforce Classic, whoa, you get some retro style points, but you probably want to upgrade to Lightning when you can because it has more advanced features and better integration. So here are the steps. Step one, log into Salesforce Lightning. Step two, click the app launcher. The app launcher is the little waffle in the top left-hand corner. Step three, go to the reports tab. Here's where you can access all of your custom reports and Salesforce reports folders. Click on all folders. It is on the left-hand side, and this is where you can find the Chargent reports folder. These reports come standard with the Chargent packages. Good news, you can customize these reports just like you build and customize your other Salesforce reports. Step five, review the reports. Okay, let's look at a couple of the Chargent reports. First, let's look at the report called All Transactions Last 90. The All Transactions Last 90 report is great for reconciling your Salesforce transaction records with the transaction records in your gateway. Your accounting department is gonna like the sound of that. One thing we always recommend is that you use the save as and slightly change the report name to make a copy of any report before you make any changes. That way, you'll still have a copy of the original report included in the Chargent package and you can use the copy to modify and add filters, etc. For example, if the report was originally called Awesome Report April, you might change it to Awesome Report April Amex or whatever is helpful for you. At the top of the report, a column graph is displayed. Click the gear to the right to change the properties of the graph. You may prefer to display a bar graph, for example. This is where you can also make more configuration changes. For instance, you can add a title for your chart and you can even remove the chart altogether. Below the graph, the chargent fields and the values contained within are displayed. Note that the transactions are grouped by the month in which they occurred and a subtotal and a grand total are displayed. You can toggle the row counts, detail rows, subtotals, and grand total switches at the bottom to adjust the report to your liking. But not all of the chargent fields are displayed on the report. If you're doing e-check transactions as well as credit card transactions, you may want to show the bank account fields on the report too. Fortunately, that's really easy to do. Step six, edit your reports. To make changes to the report, just click on edit at the top right. On the left-hand side under columns, you can add, remove, and reposition the fields to build a report that is most useful for you. In this case, I would like to see the bank account fields on the report, so I'm going to add them here. I'm just placing the cursor in the box, which reads add column, to see all of the fields which we can add to our report. I'm going to add bank account name and bank account last four, since I want to see these on my report. Step seven, make report groupings. You can also do more groupings here. For example, you might want to break out credit card and bank account transactions on your report for faster analysis. I'm going to add a grouping based on payment method in order to accomplish this. Step eight, set up report filters. Let's say your CEO wants to see a report which only contains the American Express transactions. Use a filter to display only those records with card type American Express. Step nine. Check payment errors from yesterday. Okay, now click on payment errors from yesterday. This is a helpful report for quickly learning about any errors that occurred during yesterday's payment processing. In order to correct the error, 
and alert you that you may need to get a new payment source from your customer. Here you can see that there were three transactions which were declined yesterday, which need my attention. I can click down into the transaction record to obtain additional information in the gateway response fields. In this transaction, we can see that the card security code which was entered was incorrect. I should either verify that I entered it correctly or I may need to contact the customer to obtain the correct code in order to process the charge. Pro tip, if you wanna get this report in your email on a daily basis, just click the subscribe button. Or if weekly is better for you, you can save as to make a copy of the report and change the date range to weekly. There are some changes that I would like to make this report, so I click the edit button at the top. Here is where I can add, remove, and reposition the fields on my report. In addition, I can group rows in my report. I'm going to remove the row grouping and sort the list into a descending order by the amount field. This way, I will allow my accounts receivable representative to reach out to customers who have the highest outstanding value first. Step 10, add reports to the navigation bar. If you want to access Salesforce reports more quickly, you can add reports to your navigation bar. Click on the pencil in the top right under your profile picture and then click add more items. Click all on the left under available items and search for reports. Click the plus sign to the left of reports. Click on add one nav item button located at the bottom right. Step 11, add reports to Salesforce favorites. To add reports to your Salesforce favorites, click on the star here when you're viewing a report. To access the report later, click the drop down next to the star and find it there. And now check out this next video where I'm going to show you how to test your payments in Salesforce Sandbox. My name is Stacy, and at Chargent, we're dedicated to helping Salesforce customers like you keep your payments simple. And remember, we're always here to help. So check out this next video.